Hi everyone, Krista Cowan here with another episode of the Barefoot Genealogist. Today's topic is making discoveries with the new and improved Ancestry DNA Match List. A few months ago at Roots Tech, we announced that we were updating the DNA Match List. At the time, everybody was given the option to opt in to participate in the beta if they so chose. We're getting ready to launch it soon, and so I wanted to make sure to put together a video to give you uh, an overview of all of the parts and pieces of the new updated match list to highlight some of the changes that we've made at your request because we've been listening to those of you who've been using it and to the feedback that you've been giving us, which is fantastic. And I also wanted to just share with you my methods for how I'm using the new tools to manage all of my DNA matches and the discoveries that I'm making. Now, you don't have to do it the way that I'm doing it, but hopefully it'll spark some ideas to help you develop a system that'll work for you. Now, before we dive into today's content, I just want to give you a few quick reasons why I love the DNA match list. Now, there's a lot of reasons why people take the Ancestry DNA test. But when you start digging into your match list, there's some reasons that become really clear about how it can benefit you. I'll share some of mine, maybe some of those will resonate with you. First, I love that DNA matches provide me with additional evidence that the ancestors in my family tree are really my ancestors. So it allows me to put together those pieces and add that genetic evidence to the documentary evidence that I've been collecting uh, for years in my family tree. And it helps me to feel more confident that I'm climbing my own family tree and not somebody else's, that I haven't just erroneously attached a wrong set of parrots somewhere in my tree and, and gone off on a tangent. So the DNA evidence helps me to do that, and that DNA evidence comes through those DNA matches. Another reason why I love the DNA match list is because it provides me with new pieces of evidence. New pieces of evidence provide me with clues to discover ancestors behind those brick walls in my family tree. Okay. I have brick walls, hopefully you do too. I'm gonna to feel very alone in that. <laughs> so so um, most of us probably have some kind of brick wall or another, sometimes they're close in, sometimes they're a little bit further out in our family tree. But as we look at our DNA matches and start to figure out who they are and organize that match list a little bit, you're gonna find that there's information that will lead you to the identity of the people on the other side of that brick wall. Reason number three why I love the DNA match list is because it allows me to make connections with living cousins, people who might have a piece of the family story, people that I can help figure out how they fit into my family, how I can learn how I fit into theirs. Um, it's, it's a little bit like putting a giant puzzle together. And in some cases, I've developed some really great relationships with people that have allowed me to share discoveries with them and stories and uh, even photos of the ancestors that I've never seen before. I'm named after my great-grandmother. She died when my grandfather was about two or three years old. And so I never knew her. Uh, my mom never knew her own grandmother. But I'm named after her, and I grew up hearing stories of her. And because of one of my DNA matches, I now have a photo of her as a child that I never would have found probably any other way. He just got interested in, in family history and took a DNA test, and uh, we were connected as, as close-ish cousins, and that started a, a relationship and some communication that ended up in us sharing a lot of uh, really great information and stories and this really precious photograph. So those are the three reasons why I love the DNA match list. I don't know why you use the DNA match list or what you're trying to discover, uh, but my guess is it probably fits in one of those three categories. If it's something entirely different, that's great. Leave a comment. I'd love to hear uh, what your reasons are. Now, with that discussion about the DNA match list, let's go ahead and dive into the new match list, the changes that we've made, and how they're going to help you make even more discoveries. Okay, as we start our discussion about the new Ancestry DNA match list, the first thing that you need to know is that as of the recording of this video, nearly 15 million people have taken the Ancestry DNA test. Combined with that, there are 100 million family trees on Ancestry. What that means is that we're able to make about 11 billion different connections uh, between all of the people and the information there in our network. Now that's really great news because what it means is that almost everyone who takes a DNA test with Ancestry is going to be able to make some kind of discovery. In fact, 
random statistic, the average Ancestry DNA user has about 50,000 DNA matches. That's 50,000 opportunities to make a new discovery. So let's go over some quick basics about how to make sure you're set up so that you get the best use out of your match list. So the first thing is you have to have taken, of course, an Ancestry DNA test and or have manager or contributor access to the test results of a family member. Then you need to have a family tree online at Ancestry. Now you don't have to have this to participate in Ancestry DNA, but if you want to get the most out of your experience, having a public or private searchable family tree online is going to be really useful to help you and your matches make new discoveries. Then you want to have your DNA results attached in your family tree to the person who took the test. Now, if you're not sure if you've done this correctly, just go to your DNA homepage, click on settings, and look at the family tree linking section. You want to make sure that it's linked to the right tree. You want to make sure it's linked to the right person in the tree. So it's going to be the person who took the test. Okay, now with that, let's take a look at the new match page. So I've privatized some information, um, trying to respect the privacy of my family members. Most of my immediate family has given me permission to share their information and some of their match list information, but um, I've tried to privatize it where I can uh, just to respect their privacy a little bit. So. Um, this is the new match list. For those of you who have not yet opted into the beta, this might look a little bit different than it did before. Up here in the top right hand corner, you're going to see the little beta switch and so uh, you can toggle that on and off to see the new versus the old if you want to compare them. Uh, I went to the new, uh, switched over to beta uh, actually before Roots Tech and have not switched back because all of the tools that I need are available right here and uh, there were a couple of tweaks that have been made along the way since uh, Roots Tech since we made the announcement and hopefully you'll catch on to those. Those have all been based on feedback we've been getting from you and those like you who have been using the new match list. So, um, the, the beta switch is up here on the top corner. Right underneath that, there's a little link to the map. So, for those of you who used that before to see where your DNA matches were in the world, um, that, that's kind of an interesting interactive to be able to see it at that level. Up here on the top left, you're going to see your test picker. That's kind of a funny phrase, but basically what it means is if you have access to tests other than your own, you can click on that. It'll give you a drop down list and you can switch back and forth between the match lists of the different tests that you have access to. So that's kind of exciting. Okay, then down here, you're going to see some new filters and new ways to view your match list. So you're gonna have this all matches drop down menu, you're gonna have this add a filter drop down menu, and then just like before, you're gonna have this search box um, that's gonna pop open a search op some search options. We're not gonna talk much about that today because I really wanna focus on these two new filters. Okay, let's actually start with the filters. So when you click that add a filter button, you're going to get this little drop down menu that's going to allow you to filter your match list by any one of these options. The top option there on that list is common ancestors. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. The next option is matches you haven't viewed yet. Now, if you remember from the old match list, we called those the blue dot matches, right? Basically, any time a match is added to your list, which happens when someone new takes a test, and they come up as a DNA match to you, uh, they have a little blue dot on them. As soon as you view that match or view the match compare page, then the blue dot goes away. Now there is one change with the new match list system, and that is that the blue dots are not resettable. That's kind of a funny concept. Um, so in the old match list, you could view a match, but then you could reset the blue dot if you wanted to pretend that you hadn't seen it before or use the blue dot as a type of filter. But because we have so many new filters, uh, we have made that um, fixed, which means you can't reset the blue dot anymore. Now, don't despair. <laughs> uh, I'll show you the ways to uh, do something even cooler here in just a minute. 
The next filter that you've got there is for people that you have messaged. So that's other matches that you have either sent or received messages to or from. And that's a really great way to find some of those people you've communicated with really quickly. Unless you're the kind of person who sends out hundreds of messages, in which case that might be a little less informative. Next is the notes. So those of you who didn't know, you always could leave notes on your match page. You still can, and now we've added that as one of the ways you can filter your match list down to those uh, matches on whom you have left a note. Next on the list is those with private linked trees. So you can filter your list by that, by those with public linked trees, or by those with unlinked trees. Now I would strongly encourage you if you have an unlinked tree to go ahead and link it and if you see a match with an unlinked tree you might want to shoot them a message and invite them to link it as well. Now one other thing to be aware of is that with the new match list those notes that you make are now visible directly on the match list or at least the first 60 characters or so. Are. So that's really a great improvement that came about uh, because of feedback that we got from our community. The other thing that you need to know, uh, because there's been a little bit of confusion about this uh, as I've participated in some of the Facebook groups and looked at some of the feedback that's been coming in, is that you do not need to have an Ancestry subscription in order to send or receive messages to or from your matches. So if you don't have a subscription, that's just fine. You can still send messages to your DNA matches. And if your DNA matches do not have a subscription, they do not need one to get a message from you or to respond to that message. So message away, <laughs> okay? Okay, next, let's talk about groups. So filters uh, are under that second button there. Match groups are under this first button here. Now, before I dive in to talk about the match groups, I think what I need to do is probably introduce you to my tree uh, so that you can understand how I've set up my match groups. Now, like I said at the beginning, uh, you can design whatever method you think is going to work best for you. I'm going to share the method that I use, and hopefully if you haven't got a method yet, or if you're looking for inspiration to design your own method, this will help. So the first thing that you need to know is that in my family tree, I've color coded it um, based on my eight great grandparents. So I did it in the order of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue. There's no indigo, heart emoji. That's a whole other issue. Um, so red, orange, yellow, green, blue, uh, indigo, violet, and pink. Now the way that I did this um, is kind of silly. So basically what I did was I went out on the internet and I looked for colored heart emojis. Emojis, just like you use when you text message. And then I copied and pasted those into the suffix field of the names for each of these people in my tree. So I did that just so that I could have a quick glance. I also have a printed copy of this hanging on the wall of my desk so that I can remember. But then also as I've just worked with it over, over time and because I did it in the order of the rainbow and I've known that since I was a child, I learned a song about it in kindergarten, right, that I'm not going to sing, um, then that means that I've got, uh, I, I always know that my father's father's father is red, and my mother's mother's mother is pink, and my father's mother's mother is green, because I've just been doing this long enough. And when you spend enough time with your tree and with your matches, you'll start to know those things too. So I did it in the order of the rainbow so that I could remember the order in my tree. You, some people have done um, shades of blue for their father and shades of pink for their mother. Uh, some people have done light colors and dark colors. Like there's all sorts of options. And the reason there are all sorts of options is because in your DNA match list, we have given you 24 different colors to work with. So here's how I've divided up my match list. You come in here and you click on Create Custom Group. And when you do that, it will give you the option to select one of those 24 colors and then give that color a label. Now in my case, here's how I've done that. Uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, pink, okay? What you're looking at here are the drop-down lists for each of my parents. Now, because I've been able to test each of my parents, 
I don't spend a whole lot of time with my own match list because I can't inherit anything that they didn't give me. So I spend most of my time with the match list of my two parents. And so I just added those colored groups to them. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's go back to my tree, okay? So here, for example, is my great-grandfather, Frederick Cowan, and he is red. His parents are Cowan and Inman. So if you look over here, group number one is red, and it's labeled the Cowan Inman group. Back to my tree. My great-grandmother, Lillian, she's orange. Her parents are Noak and Cadix. So group number two, orange, Noak and Cadix. I could come down here to my great Grandfather Albert, he's purple. His parents are Kerr and Neely. In this case, the purple group is Kerr and Neely on my mom's match list. So this is my dad's match list here on the left, my mom's match list on the right, and that's how I created my custom groups. Now you'll notice I also have some other groups that I've created. I have a hat paint group, that's my review this group. I'll tell you about that a little bit more in a minute. I also have this group that I call No Tree, No Clue. That doesn't always matter. Sometimes even if there's no tree, I have a clue and I can figure it out. And I am going to do a video very soon about how I do that. I did one years ago, uh, but it's gotten a little outdated, so I'm going to be refreshing that. Uh, but every once in a while, I still come across some matches that I can't figure out. You'll notice there are none, zero, in my mom's match list that I haven't been able to figure out so far. Um, that don't have a tree, and 21 of my dad's match list that we're still trying to figure out. So that's one of the groups I created. And then I created this still need to figure it out group because I know that if I just spend enough time, I probably could figure it out. Um, it just so happens that at the time I was working on it, I didn't, uh, I didn't have the time and to dig into it and I didn't want to lose it. So remember how we talked earlier about those blue dots? And I know a lot of you were using those blue dots as a way to mark them so that you could come back to them later. Well, I just created this still need to figure that out group. I dot them with that color and then they uh, end up there in that group. Now the great thing is I can filter down to any one of these groups at any time. The default filter is all matches. Now remember I said the average Ancestry DNA test taker has about 50,000 cousin matches. So my family apparently is pulling the average up just a little bit. My dad has 62,556 matches. My mom and her southern roots and their big family is 77,020 matches. So this is new. Uh, we have never given you your full match list count before, and now you can see it, and this is updated in real time. So you'll be able to keep track of how many total matches you have. Then there's some permanent filters. So these top colored filters I added, these filters down here are just part of the Ancestry DNA match list experience. This first one here under all matches is close matches. So it allows you to see how many fourth cousins and closer you have on your match list. Then you've got those distant matches. So that's gonna be those fifth through eighth cousins. New matches, so this is new. <laughs> um, the blue dot uh, is the matches you haven't viewed yet. So they're new to you. But one of the things that people were asking for was how to see who the true new matches are. On the old match list, we allowed you to sort your match list by date, and that's essentially what this does, uh, but we've labeled it new matches, and what it does is it shows you the new matches for the last seven days, and then the last, the week before that, so you can kind of see um, in chronological order. Uh, hidden matches, so in the old match list, uh, there was a little trash can that allowed you to trash your matches. And I know a lot of people didn't want to trash their matches. They just used that feature as a way to filter things out. Uh, I think what they were trying to accomplish a lot of times was to get to meaningful matches faster. And now with all of these filters, it's a lot easier to do. And so you might want to go look and see if you've got hidden matches, restore them to your match list so that you can then start to add them to some of these more meaningful filter groups that you can create for yourself. Now, um, some of you are gonna see like over here on my mom's side, you see where it says shared matches with mother by a kid, shared matches with father by a kid at the bottom. So that's because my mother's parents have not tested. Now they never will because they're both deceased, so those will just always sit there. 
On my dad's side, my grandmother tested. So he has shared matches with mother. And we're really grateful that we got her tested before she passed just a few months ago. Um, well, we tested her years ago, but she passed a few months ago. Um, but we're really grateful that we were able to get her tested. And so he has a shared matches with mother button, but he has that buy a kit for your father that, again, part of the permanent system there. So that's what those match uh, um, counts mean, and then you'll notice you have the counts for each of them. The very top match group is also a fixed group, and that's the starred matches. So for those of you using the old match list, you're not going to lose your starred matches. Um, but I'll tell you a little bit about how I use my starred matches. So other, besides having colored dots that allow me to tell you which branch of my family tree each of my matches connects through, I use the star as a way to denote that I have completed working with this match, meaning I've added them to my tree, I've verified the path between us and our common ancestor with additional evidence, and um, I'm, you know, I've messaged them if I wanted to message them, and so I'm kind of done working with it. Uh, I chose to use it that way because then it allows me to see just at a single glance here, I've identified, for example, uh, in my dad's match list who 866 of those matches are, how they fit into our family tree, and I've added them to the tree. So it's a great way to have, for me, to have a really quick glance at that information. So that's how I have used the new system to create the custom groups. Again, you just click on this all matches filter on your match list, create custom groups. You can create as many of them as you want. And then I'll show you here in just a minute where you go to add those to your people. A couple of tips about this. Uh, if you view a match at all, assign them to at least one group. That's why I like having these little extra groups, review this, no tree, still need to figure out. That way I at least know that I've looked at the match and I've put them somewhere and they don't get lost in that, you know, match list of 62,000 people. Um, I would also encourage you to be consistent across the tests that you manage. If you manage multiple tests, design a system that allows you to be consistent. So in my case, I manage both of my parents' match lists. So you can see here, I've created these colored groups. But in my own match list, and in the match list of my grandmother, I use the exact same colors to mean the exact same thing. So on my match list, I have matches, you know, uh, match colored match groups one through eight uh, of all eight colors. I have the review this group, I have the no tree group, and the still need to figure out group, and I use the same consistent colors across all three, four tests, myself, my parents, my grandmother. Um, I also manage tests for a couple of aunts and a couple of cousins. <laughs> um, and so I'm, I'm trying to be consistent across all of my tests in the colors that I use and the labels that I use for the groups so that I uh, don't have to rethink my system every time I come to a new match list. One other thing I wanted to tell you about this is that you can use both a match group and a filter at the same time. So you don't have to just use one or the other. I could, for example, look at all of the Cowan Inman matches who have an attached tree, or I could look at all of my new blue dot matches who are fourth cousins or closer, or any combination of those two uh, filters, the matches and the filters. Okay, let's take a look at how this looks now on the actual match list. So here's my match list again, and you can see we've got that all matches filter that we were just viewing, the filters that we were looking at just before that, and then over here you can see that I have added individuals on my match list to specific groups. So I'm on my match list. This here is my dad. And so he gets added to the four groups that represent his four grandparents. And like I mentioned, there's that note feature. Uh, we'll show you where you add those notes, but here's where they show up on your match list. Next is my mom. You can see she's added to the four colored groups that are for her grandparents. And then below that, uh, we start to see my siblings. So here's two of my brothers. They get all eight match groups. Um, so that's an important fact, which is this. Any single person can be added to any number of groups. Um, I've got my siblings in all eight groups. That's the most I have. Uh, most people are just in one or maybe two groups. Uh, 
but my closer relatives are going to be in more, which I think makes for a colorful match list. <laughs> so um, that's kind of fun. But it becomes super useful uh, as we dive into this a little deeper and as you get further down your match list, uh, having just that one or two colors that they're assigned to is great. So any single person can be added to any number of match groups. And of course, any single match group can have any number of people. Okay, so with all of these great tools, the question then becomes, how am I related to all of these matches? I see that question so often. The first thing to just remember is you are related to them. If they're on your DNA match list, you share DNA. So you're genetically related to these people. On that match list, one of the things that I forgot to point out is we've also now surfaced how much DNA you share with that person. So right there under the predicted relationship, you're going to see the amount of shared DNA. And just next to that, you're going to see a little I. Now, in a minute, we're going to look at a match. Uh, this is a screenshot. We're going to look at a match on the actual match list. And I'll click that little I and you'll see what happens. But um, we've surfaced that information so that you can start to see how much DNA you share with these people on your match list. Because the amount of DNA that you share gives you uh, an idea of what relationship you are to that person. Now, of course, the further down the list you go, the more distantly related you likely are to that person, and the wider the range of possible relationships. So that gets a little tricky, but just wanted to let you know that we are showing that amount of shared DNA right there on the match list now. So when you approach your match list and you're trying to figure out how you're related to all these people, my first piece of advice is start with the matches that you know. Now, for some of you, that's super easy because you've tested some of those people. You've maybe tested your parents or your siblings or an aunt or uncle or a first cousin. So start with the matches that you know. Make sure that you put some notes in, and I'll show you my notes here in just a minute. Make sure that you give them the appropriate colored dot because that's going to become really useful information when you start to figure out the matches you don't know. So just like in all of family history, you start with what you know and you work from the known to the unknown. Now, for those of you who haven't tested close family members yet, that is something you might want to consider. If your parents are still alive or grandparents, by all means, get them tested. Um, if they're not still alive, do you have any aunts or uncles or first cousins on either side of your family? Having those close family members tested is going to help you start to sort out your matches between the different branches of your family tree. Now, barring that, you'll just have to figure out how you're related to some of those common or to some of those DNA matches. Ancestry is going to help you do some of that. Now, we have a thing called common ancestors. It's a new filter. It is replacing the old shared ancestor hints and it's a little bit more robust. So let me explain to you a little bit about common ancestors. Common ancestors are uh, determined if you have your results attached to a public or private searchable online tree and attached to the person who took the test. That's important. You also need to make sure that you have complete names and birth dates of the person who took the test and their parents or grandparents. Now, one of the things that we've been seeing is that some of you have tried to um, privatize your own trees. <laughs> uh, so you've put in fake names or uh, no birth date or no name or just a, an initial. Um, and I think some of you do that because you don't understand how the ancestry tree system works. So let me just briefly explain that to you. Anytime you mark someone as living in your tree, you'll be able to see all of their information because it's your tree. But anybody else who looks at your tree will just see the word private. So they won't see any other information. They won't see names. They won't see dates. They won't see places. They won't see any photos or documents you've attached to that person. Ancestry takes privacy really seriously. And so as long as you have that person marked as living, you'll be able to see the information because it's your tree. Nobody else will be able to see it. That's important because we need to know, or our computers rather, need to know that the person that the DNA test is attached to is the person who took the test. So you want to make sure that you add the name and birth date of the person who took the test uh, into the tree and their parents and or grandparents where possible. 
If you've done that, uh, Ancestry can go to work, or computers rather, can go to work trying to figure out for you how you're related to some of your DNA matches. So if both you and a match have your, your trees attached, what we'll do first is we'll follow your tree. So we'll try to look through your tree and through your matches tree to see if we can find the path that connects the two of you. Now, if both of you have the same common ancestor in your tree, great. We'll just show you that path. Just like here on the right, we've got you, we've got this match, Lucy, and we can tell from your tree that you have a common great-grandmother, Ann Bates, and we can tell you exactly what the path is between you and Lucy based on the information in your tree. Now, let's say you didn't have Ann in your tree. So Ancestry would look at your tree and it would say, oh, you've got James as your father and John as your grandfather, and then you don't know who John's mother is. And so at that point, Ancestry would go out and look at the 100 million trees we have out on our site and see if we could find your grandfather in anybody else's tree and see if they know who John's, father, or John's mother is. And then we would give you a suggestion. So if it's in a solid white box, when you're looking at the common ancestor hint, it came from your tree. But if it's in this dotted translucent box, then it came from another tree on ancestry. It may be the tree of your DNA match, or it may be one of the other 100 million trees out there on ancestry. And we'll tell you what tree it came from. You can actually click on it. It'll open up the tree. You can see what evidence they have attached to that. You can contact the tree owner, uh, see what they know about that relationship to validate that that information is actually correct. So you and Lucy here in this example share DNA. As a matter of fact, 341 centimorgans of DNA. That denotes a really close relationship. And so you know you're related to Lucy. The question is, how are you related to Lucy? And so we use tree data, your tree, Lucy's tree, and if neither of you have the common ancestor, any trees we can find out there on Ancestry to give you a potential path to explore to determine if that is good evidence that you and Lucy are related through this common ancestor that we're showing you. Hopefully that made sense. If you've got questions about that, like always, feel free to leave comments here on the YouTube video. I do watch those and respond as I can. Okay, let's look at um, an example here uh, in my tree or in my match list of um, one of my common ancestor hints. So this is Catherine, and Catherine is one of my cousins. Uh, I have met her. I didn't meet her until I was in my 30s, actually. Yeah, I think I was in my late 30s, and uh, she was the descendant of my great-great-grandparents, and it was a branch of the family tree that we had lost touch with. My grandfather, there's a whole story there. He wanted me to find his cousins, and so I did. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was after he passed. But Catherine's lovely, and I visited her uh, in her hometown uh, several times, and she has given me permission to use her match page with my dad to show this information to you. So this is what the new match page looks like. So when you find a match on your match list and you want to view them, you click to view the match, and it takes you to a page that looks like this. So it'll show you, um, you, or in this case, we're looking at my dad's match list, and then the match. This, if I click on uh, her name, that actually will take me to her profile page. Now, the profile page is something else that is in beta right now, so you can turn that on or off. So it'll show the relationship between me and Catherine. This is my account, uh, how much DNA we share. If she manages any other tests that I also match, I could click on that to take that. Uh, to take me to that match page. And then right up here where it says DNA relationship two, right now it says me, right, Krista Cowan, because it's my account. I could click on that and it would show me all the other tests that I manage and I could actually go through those one at a time and see if Catherine matches any of the other tests that I also manage. Now, I, there's some other information here on this match page or on this profile page, including links to her tree and her photo gallery. And in this case, she's chosen to share her ethnicity estimate with her DNA matches. So I can see all of that here from her profile page. 
I got to the profile page again by clicking on her username here in the header on the DNA match page. Now, directly under her username, I'm going to see the predicted relationship. Now, remember that relationship is predicted based on the amount of DNA that we share, but there are a lot of different relationships that could be between uh, these two individuals. So directly underneath that, you're going to see the amount of shared DNA. Now, remember I said that showed up on the DNA match list now with the little I. Well, if you click the little I, it does the same thing if you click the little shared Cinemorgan amount. We now have uh, what we call possibility and probability charts. Catherine and my dad share 390 Cinemorgans of DNA. And this chart is created that shows all of the possible relationships between Catherine and my dad and what the probability of those relationships uh, are. So I, she could be his first cousin once removed, his half first cousin, his great great grandparents, right? So there's lots of different possible relationships. And so that's important to keep in mind because sometimes we look at that predicted relationship and we think, oh, this person must be my first or second cousin. Well, um, families and DNA are a little bit more complicated than that. So we've given you this chart to help you start to understand all of the different possibilities. In this case, Catherine happens to be my dad's second cousin. And so while there's only a 22% probability of that, as opposed to a 77% probability of one of these other relationships, it just so happens that Catherine and my dad inherited more DNA than is typical for second cousins. Totally still within the realm of possibility, however. So that's exciting. Um, so that chart is available on every one of your matches, either by clicking the little I on the match list or by clicking the shared Cinemorgan amount here on the match compare page. Directly under that, you're going to see where you can add people to groups. So if I click on that, it pops open my group list. As you can see, I can add her to my starred match list. I have because I have put her in my tree. I can then check any one of these other um, colored groups that I've created and add her to one of those. I also can edit these groups at any time, just clicking on the little pencil icon from any one of the places where that drop down list shows up. I can adjust the name of the group. I can adjust the color of the group. Just be careful because once you've created a group or a system and you've added people to that group, if you change it anywhere, it changes it everywhere on that particular match list. You can also delete the group, but again, be very careful with that because if you've added a bunch of people to that group, you delete that group, it goes away for everyone on that particular match list. So in this case, I've added Catherine to the starred group because I put her in my tree. I've added her to the Cowan Inman group because that's the particular branch of the family tree through which she is related to us. If you forget what the colors mean, you don't have to click open that match list every time. You just move your mouse uh, or your pointer over the dot and you'll see a little pop-up that tells you what the label is for that particular colored group. So you don't have to click here and open this every time. Just move your mouse over that. Okay, just below that, you're going to see your notes. If you click on the little note icon, the new notes feature, so the old notes feature used to be a pop down. This is a pop out from the side. So we've moved it, but this it puts it in the same place on the DNA match list that notes show up in your family tree. So it's a consistent experience, uh, both on the match list now and in the family tree. I'm just gonna walk you quickly through how I do my notes. So in this case, um, I have these little colored hearts. I actually, that was before the colored groups came along, how I color coded things. So I could remove that now because I have the dot. I just haven't. I put her real name, and in this case, for women in particular, I put their maiden name. What I'm doing is I'm trying to um, put the name by which I have them entered in my tree, and because I enter all women into the tree with their maiden name, that's how I enter them here. Uh, also, you know, some of your DNA matches are going to use usernames or cryptic names or initials, and you want to be able to know who they are and who they are in your tree. So if you figured that out, go ahead and put that right there in the notes so that you can find them in your tree. The next thing I put into my notes is who the common ancestors are between myself and this match, and then what the actual relationship is. So in this case, Catherine and my dad are second cousins, and then I just dump the shared 
amount of DNA there so that I have that all in one place. So that's how I uh, structure my notes. You can do them however works best for you, but uh, that works for me really well. Okay, so then also on the new match page, you're going to see her tree. So this is the tree that Catherine has attached to her DNA. And if I didn't know how we were, were related, uh, I could look at this tree and start to investigate some of these branches to see if I could figure out where we were connected. If I scroll down past that, you're going to see the shared surnames that we have in our tree. I could look at just the surname she has in her tree uh, and in a list form that way instead of in this tree view. And then below that, we're going to have a map of shared ancestral birth locations. So that is the basic structure of the new DNA match compare page. Over here on the left-hand side, however, we have the common ancestor box. So remember, we started this portion of the video talking about common ancestors. And in this case, the common ancestor between, or common ancestors between Catherine and my family is my great-great-grandparents. They're my dad's great-grandparents, Park and Carrie. So if I click this view relationship button, it's going to open up a relationship chart that shows exactly the path between Catherine and my family, or in this case, my dad. Now remember I said if it's in a solid white box, that means it's already in my tree. So what this tells me is all this information is already in my tree. And hopefully it's already in my tree because I've already verified it. I've um, made sure that the shared amount of DNA is within range. I've looked at other documentation, census records, and other things, birth, marriage, and death records that, that are gonna give me additional evidence to prove my relationship to Park and Catherine's relationship to Park. And then I just use the DNA as an additional piece of evidence of that relationship. And then, last but not least, uh, the other thing you have here on your new DNA match page that you've always had on your DNA match page is the shared matches feature. I'm not going to click on that right here on Catherine's match list because of the privacy of the people on that list, but basically that's going to show all of the DNA matches that my dad and Catherine have in common where they both share more than 20 centimorgans of DNA with that match. Uh, and that threshold is set because then there's a higher probability that all of those people then are also related to us on the red line. Uh, and so I can start to dot those people in that color, even if I haven't figured out who they are yet, so that I can start to sort them or filter them into family groups. So that's the power of this new match list, and I'm so excited about it. How are you related to all of these matches? Well, you start with the known and you work toward the unknown. In this case, I know who Catherine is, and so I know that she is related to us through that set of, great, of my great-great-grandparents, which means that it is most likely that every match that we share in common with her is also related to us through either um, the Cowans, Park Cowan and his family, or through the Inmans, Carrie Inman and her family. Um, and as I look at that branch of my family tree, it helps me start to make new discoveries. Well, that is all we have time for today. Hopefully this was useful information to take this little tour through the new and improved Ancestry DNA match list and my methods for keeping track of all the madness. <laughs> um, it's so exciting to see new DNA matches come in every week and to continue to make new discoveries and to connect with new cousins, but it can get a little bit overwhelming and I understand that with all the new matches and all of the possible discoveries to be made. So hopefully these new tools give you a little bit of a better way to manage all of that information and to start to really connect it with the discoveries that you can make about yourself and your ancestors and some of those connections you can make with those living cousins. Until next time, this is Krista Cowan. Have fun climbing your family tree.